Hi, my name is Ali Shesava from Bridgehead Digital. You may have experienced uh, or you may have read in articles that if we add too much compensating RAM to a peak current mode controller, your power supply with star will start acting like voltage mode. Uh, and in this video, we're going to explain exactly why. So um, for simplicity, let us just uh, consider a case of a buck converter. I have drawn the topology here and let us see what happens in voltage mode. In voltage mode, if you look at the plant frequency response, you will see that you have some PWM gain, then you have a resonant pole and then a double pole and then it starts rolling off at a rate of 40 dB per decade. For now, I'm ignoring the ESR of the capacitor. When it hits the ESR zero of the capacitor, this actually flattens out to uh, 20 dB per decade, but for simplicity, let's just ignore that for now. Um, and then this resonant bump is as a result of this L and a C, and it happens at one over two pi the square root of LC. It's an LC filter. Depending on the Q or how much damping you have got, you will have a certain amount of resonance. The other thing that will happen, this is frequency and this is gain, is that because we have got an LC um, resonant uh, system, uh, the phase at this point will go down by around here 180 degrees, right? So you will lose 180 degrees of phase at this resonant point. I should have drawn it better. The middle of it is actually here, but it doesn't matter. So you can see that in voltage mode, we're going to have a double pole under damped LC, the square root of LC, and 180 degrees of phase loss. Right? The way we create a PWM for this is like so. So I have a error amplifier, which is my compensator, that gives me a reference which I compare to a fixed ramp. And that is important. It's a fixed ramp that is going to, so, so, to my comparator. So this is my compensator. It looks something like this. This gives me the error signal. I beg your pardon, I haven't drawn it very well. There you go. Mm, it's terrible. Okay, so I really messed up that drawing. So I have included a, uh, a slide from our workshop notes. Uh, here you can see that I have got my compensator. That will give me a reference. And this is the uh, comparator. This, this is all inside of the PWMIC. And uh, here is your fixed ramp that gets compared to this reference and the output of this comparator will either be high and low, which will be driving the MOSFET. And here's an animation that shows you what's happening. So uh, there we go. As the reference goes up and down against our fixed ramp, the width of the PWM, you can see it is going to change. Right, and this goes to PWM, which is there, yeah? Okay, now let us look at the current mode. You will see if we measure the plant, and we're going to do that in the lab in a minute, that actually it doesn't look like that, even though we still have an LC. The, the, the topology stays exactly the same, but if I plot the plant of a current mode power supply, you will see that I still have some PWM gain. There is no resonant bump at all, and Instead of going at 40 dB per decade, it goes at 20 dB per decade. It looks like the inductor actually is not in the picture. However, physically, it clearly is. So what is happening? If you look at the phase of that also, that is frequency, that is gain, this is phase. You will see that at this point, the phase is actually going down only by 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees. So in a car mode controller, it looks like that the inductor is not there. Um, and the reason is that in voltage mode, uh, what we have here is a fixed ramp, 
and then we switch the PWM on and we let the inductor do its job. The back EMF of the inductor will appear across it depending on whether the switch is on or off and the inductor acts like an inductor and therefore you see the impact on the loop response as an LC filter. Current mode is different and it becomes obvious when I draw the um, the compensator for that. For the compensator of the um, current mode, the way we create our ramp is no longer fixed. We take our compensator, that is my error from the amplifier. Let me draw it here. That, again, I have an error amplifier here. But this time, Instead of comparing it to a fixed ramp, I am comparing it to the inductor current. That is how the uh, current mode works. We are, we are controlling the peak of the inductor current. So what does this, what this actually mean? In the voltage mode case, we allow the inductor to do its job. In the current mode case, we are fixing the current in the inductor. We are forcing it to be our reference value. For simplicity, let us say I am demanding an app, right? So this compensator here, in going to the comparator, the, by the way, the output of this is going to the PWM. It actually goes to a set reset flip-flop, but let us not get too confused about that. The, let's, for simpli simplicity, let's say I am demanding one app. Yeah? It is being controlled at what one amp, and this current is one amp. That's what the control loop is doing. And therefore, the inductor is not forced to have one amp, and it's not acting like an inductor anymore. It's acting like a one amp current source. And that's why it disappears out of the loop response, and we're going to show that when we measure it. So what happens, therefore, here, it is a current source feeding output capacitor and output resistor and therefore you have a single pole here which is a function it's a function of other things but it's actually a function of 1 over 2 pi c out r out plus other things but it's a first order system okay and you will see that and of course you see it when you when you when you look at the loop response now then we come along and say well We've got a problem with the slope compensation, with subharmonic oscillation, and we're going to add a certain amount of um, compensating ramp. Okay, so let me just quickly draw that again so that I can explain what happens. So for the case of voltage mode, we had our error amplifier, which was the compensator. That was the error amplifier. That went to a comparator. Output of the comparator went to PWM and that got compared to a fixed ramp. In the case of the current mode, we still had an error amplifier with our compensator. Z2, Z1, Z2. That one. This time it went to a comparator. It was not a fixed ramp, it was a variable ramp which was dependent on the inductor current. It's usually the switch current that we measure, but this bit here is being controlled and we're measuring it. Then we come and add certain amount of compensating ramp. Fixed amount of compensating ramp to get rid of subharmonic oscillations. This little amount of compensating ramp is identical to this bit. It's a fixed ramp. This is the bit that is making current mode behave like a current mode. Now imagine one case, you have got one amps of uh, um, inductor current and one pico amp of compensating ramp. It's gonna act like current mode. 99.9% .9 of it is the inductor current, but 0.01% of it is, 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 is a fixed ramp. Now imagine the other way around. Let's say we add a lot of ramp, like this. So now the amount of fixed ramp that you're adding is by far bigger than the, the inductor current. So then what is the difference between this fixed ramp with a little bit of inductor current and voltage mode? And then the inductor comes back in the picture. And that is why you experience when you add too much ramp, 
in a current mode controller, it is starting to look like voltage mode. Um, we're now going to go to lab and we're going to show you the plant of the voltage mode with 40 dB uh, roll off and, and, a, and a resonant bump and the plant of the current mode controller which is going to be 20 dB uh, roll off with no bump just to show that in current mode control the inductor is not in the picture. Okay so here we are in the lab I have got a buck converter in voltage mode and I've got an identical one in terms of topology in current mode and we're going to look at the plant of both of them. So at the moment I'm looking for the at the plant of my uh, let me clean this out at the plant of my voltage mode and just as we described on the board you can see that you've got some low frequency gain you have got your resonant bump is quite shallow because we have quite a bit of ESR in the capacitances and we have got quite a bit of uh, DCR in the uh, in the inductor and then you can see that at this point it starts to roll off at a rate of uh, 40 dB per decade just as you expect from an inductor and a capacitor and the phase starts going down from 0 towards minus 180 but then it gets pulled up. The, the, the reason for that is actually the ESR of the capacitor which we have done many videos on so we're not going to, not going to discuss but the important thing to note is that you've got an L and a C and that's why you've got this resonant bump and that's why you've got around 180 degrees of phase loss. So I'm now going to flip the boards around and we're going to look at the identical power supply in terms of hardware um, and then see that is actually a first order system without a resonant bump, just as we discussed. I have now flipped the board, uh, and now I have got a buck converter that is in current mode. And uh, if we look at the, uh, uh, the plant, uh, which is what I'm measuring, you can clearly see that it's a first order system. You've got, you've got a flat region here, it draws off at a much shallower rate compared to our LC over here that was going at 40 dB per decade, this one is going at uh, 20 dB per decade, phase loss is not minus 180, it's more like 90, again it gets pulled up because of the ESR of the capacitor. Please remember that the boards in terms of hardware are identical to each other, however you can clearly see that the, it looks like that the inductor is not even there, but it clearly is because it's right here on the board and of course uh, that is the uh, effect that uh, we discussed because you're forcing the value of the inductor current is acting like a current source. Please note that we are measuring at a quite a low frequency and if you're using an active load often at low frequencies they don't perform very well and that's why we are actually using a resistive load in order to make the measurement to make it more accurate at, uh, at lower frequencies. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you at one of our workshops.